Good morning. Good morning. Just a few short announcements. Uh, one of the things we do need is mac and cheese. Believe it or not, we have none. That's my only announcement for the pantry. Uh, my next announcement, fellowship next week. Uh, we would like two people to sign up uh, to organize our fellowship. It's always a great time and people enjoy staying after. So if you find something you can do, please uh, sign up on your way out. <clears throat> the last announcement, we are very well known in the community for our Lenten lunches. And next week after church, anyone that would like to participate and help us prepare for that, uh, please stay after church and there'll be a meeting in the side room. After fellowship. Uh, uh, if anybody signs up. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to worship this day, those of you who are watching online, those of you who came out and are here in the sanctuary, welcome to all of you. We begin our worship with the ringing of the bell. Good morning. Please stand for the call to worship. It all begins with God's grace. The gift of God's love. Grace cannot be put in a box. We receive God's grace even before we know it's there. God shows us grace not because of what we do, but because we are beloved, cherished, and forgiven. Please remain standing for our hymn, Amazing Grace. It's number 378 in your red hymnal.
you may be seated. <clears throat> uh, one more announcement. It's so great, great to have Sandy here. She is playing the keyboard. <laughs> After her surgery, it's only been a couple weeks, but the, the doctor said <clears throat> playing would be good physical therapy. So yeah. yay. <laughs> so thank you, Sandy, for being here. Thank you. Thanks. Please join me in the opening prayer. Loving God, you, you surround, surround us in your grace so fully that sometimes we don't even know it's there. It goes before us, with us, and behind us, our very breath and life. Thank you for this unending gift that calls us into life and love, makes our relationship with you right, and transforms us to become more and more like Jesus. In this time of worship, help us to know and treasure your grace more deeply. Warm our hearts by its fire. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would the ushers please come forward to accept our offerings? Today we are talking about how grace is central to our faith. When Jesus sent his disciples out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal, he instructed them not to take anything with them, but rather to stay with those who welcomed them along the way. They had to rely on the grace of God. As United Methodist, God graces us with leaders to guide us in faith, and in turn, we are conduits of God's, <coughs> excuse me, God's grace, providing for those called as leaders. You are invited to give today, knowing that as you do, you support people to follow their call as leaders in the faith. join me in the offering prayer. God, we hear and respond to your words of wisdom, your words of call and life. May these gifts, not only of our money, but ourselves, our words, our thoughts, our actions, be acceptable to you and help spread your words of life and love. Amen. You may be seated.
We come to our time of prayer. Prayer concerns that we have to, today are for those with cancer, Johnny Rivera, Pete Kachanik, Robin Adams, Carol Mannion, and Maria Parker. Those who are in need of healing prayer, Bob Reichert, who had surgery and needs prayers for his recovery, Taylor Davis, Ed, who also had surgery, Pat Trumbauer, Robert Young, Robert and Lou's nephew, Noah, Paul Taylor, Joyce Testa, and Sean Day. And those who have passed away, we pray for the family of John Young, John Young's, John Young's son passed away. So we pray for their family. That is Robert's uh, brother. We pray for the family of Bob Omack and the family of Bill Gatto. Uh, we do have an uh, other prayer for um, Pat Strobel, who moved to New York State this week. And so we pray for her wellness and, and the joy of being with her family. So let us go to God in our time of prayer. <clears throat> Loving God, we come today with great expectations that you will meet us here and bring joy in this time of worship. We praise you, God, for your amazing love that is with us always through your grace. God, sometimes we don't know where our place in this world is, but here today we know this is our place for today. God, bless us on our journey of faith, that we may be open to change in whatever form that is for you, and that we may be open to loving those that you love as well, those uh, friends and family and neighbors of ours. Today, God, we have lifted up people in need of your comfort, your healing, your compassion. We, again, lift all them up to you at this time. And we have our own concerns that we hold in our heart, and so let us lift those up silently to you, God. God, your grace frees us from our sin. And the world today has so much happening that we wish you would free us from the wars, um, the, the arguments, the evil, the despair, poverty. We lift all those up to you that you may help them be changed with your grace, with your love. We pray all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
Our scripture lesson today is taken from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are what he has made us, created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of God. Spirit to God. God is with us. All the time. All the time. God is with us. Great. Today we are continuing our exploration into the roots of our United Methodist faith. And today we explore grace. Grace is a gift from God given freely to all people to all people. Grace is love and mercy freely given to us by God because God wants us to have it. We are God's children, not because we've done anything to earn it, but because of this gift, we are saved. The Greek word in the New Testament that is translated as grace, charis, simply means gift, like there on the altar, gift. It is God's love given to all people with no strings attached. No work must be done to receive God's grace. By grace, you have been saved. In Wesleyan theology, as United Methodists, we recognize three aspects of God's grace. Prevenient, justifying, and sanctifying. <laughs> Above, about, across, after, against, along, among, around, that, before, behind, beside, beyond, between, beneath, down, despite, act, except for from in and to, like, near, of, off, on, over, to, toward, with, within. Something like that. Memorized in sixth grade. God's grace does all of that. Above, about, across, after, before, behind, beside, God's grace is all of that. God's grace is with us. And the first of the three aspects of God's grace is prevenient grace. Prevenient grace comes before, pre. It works by pulling us toward God. Prevenient grace is always with us, always pulling us toward God, pulling us forward in our faith journey. We can struggle against it, but it will not go away. In 1996, I was volunteering with a community youth music and theater group. We hosted a touring show choir that taught music and performance to children and youth in the communities they visited. The group is called the Young Americans. And my son would go on to become a member of that group based in California. In 2003, he went to California. And he's still there. <laughs> a week or so before they arrived, the Young Americans sent their advance man. 
He came to a week early so he could assess the performance space and the rehearsal space. He also visited the public schools in our area, encouraging them to allow their students to participate. He came before the actual show choir, preparing their way. Such is provenient grace. Well, sort of. It comes before. It is God's love for us, present in us from day one, for everyone, every one. Provenient grace nudges us forward in faith to God's redeeming love. By grace, you have been saved. The second grace, aspect of grace, justifying grace, brings us into right relationship. Thank you. Right relationship with God. As all humanity is born with the sin of turning away from God. That's our greatest sin, is turning away from God, thinking we can do it all by ourselves. In Romans 3, verse 23, it says, All have sinned, and fall short of God's glory. We cannot be good enough no matter how hard we try, so we need God to make things right between God and us, to justify us. According to John Wesley, justification is another word for pardon. It is the forgiveness of all our sins and what is necessarily implied therein, our acceptance with God. Just as a computer or a word processor justifies the margins on the page, God's justifying grace brings us into right relationship with God. In other words, when I am justified by God's grace, I am forgiven, just as if I'd never sinned. Just as if I'd never sinned. By grace, you have been saved. Sanctifying grace is God's desire for us to grow in holiness. Now that doesn't mean we have to be holier than thou or something mag mag magnanimous. <laughs> it just means we want to grow closer to God. God wants relationship with us. Through sanctification we grow closer and closer to God. We grow in holiness. The word sanctify simply means to make holy. God's sanctifying grace shapes us more and more into the likeness of Christ. That is the goal, is to become more and more like Christ and to do more and more works as Christ did. As the Holy Spirit fills our lives with love for God and our neighbor, we begin to live differently. And this continues throughout our lives. We are never finished. It's through God's grace that we are changed. We are changed and we never go back to who we were. We are changed by God's grace. John Wesley taught that, quote, while our sin is deep and serious, God's grace is even more powerful. There we go. God's grace is more powerful than any sin that we might carry. By the sanctifying grace of God, we can actually grow in grace, grow to be more filled with grace, more holy, more grace-filled, more like Christ. 
we become more holy, more faithful than when we first started our holy journey. The Holy Spirit that brought forth new life in creation brings forth new life in us. The Holy Spirit that brought forth new life in creation in Genesis also brings forth new life in us. By grace you have been saved. There is nothing we can do to earn God's grace. You see, God's grace is within us, has been since the very beginning. Any good work that we do is the result of the grace of God working within us through the Holy Spirit. Our good works do not earn us God's grace. They come from God's grace in us. Our good, good works do not earn us any grace. It's God's grace that pulls us into doing good works. It won't be long until spring arrives. Right? <laughs> do you like to garden? Yes. Oh, someone raised their hand. <laughs> Maybe soon you'll be planting your seedlings inside your warm house, getting them ready to be planted in your garden. We can think of God's grace as soil that makes everything grow. Soil that makes everything grow. In all ways, God wants to be in relationship with with us. I've said this over and over. That's the reason God created us, to be in relationship. God wanted us to be in relationship with each other, but mostly with God. God's grace helps move us to the understanding that the love God has for us is unending, is free, God's grace empowers us to give thanks to God, and because of God's grace, uh, because of God's love for us, God's gift to us of amazing grace will do great things, loving things, merciful things. In verse 8 it said, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. You have been saved by faith because of the gift of God's grace, God's love and mercy for you. William Barclay said, quote, The word grace emphasizes at one and the same time the helpless poverty of man and the limitless God kindness of God. We need to look within ourselves and find where God's grace is working and where we may be blocking God's grace from doing good works through us. You see, God continues to work on us. We all need work on us, right? On our hearts. When we experience God's grace, we cannot help but respond. We cannot help but respond. Where are you experiencing God's grace in your life? When have you been so full of grace that you had to respond and take, take charge of doing something for someone Take time this week and consider which of the three types of grace resonates where you are. Do you feel God's prevenient grace working in you, pulling you toward God? Do you know that you are justified, that you have been forgiven, that Jesus Christ came to, re 
uh, remove our sin. He sacrificed himself that we may have life eternal. And sanctifying grace helps us to grow more and more toward God, grow more and more like Christ. Grace provides us the opportunity to realign ourselves with Jesus. Faith is a dynamic journey that we're on, and it's dependent on God's grace no matter where we are on that journey. It's not a straight line from provenient grace to justifying grace to sanctifying grace, and then we move on and on and on. It's kind of like the stages of grief, where you um, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. All those come. They may not come in a straight line. They may come and go and then come back and then you go somewhere else. That's the way our faith journey is. And through it all, God's grace is pulling us towards God. One last illustration that John Wesley used to explain the three aspects of God's grace. And that is a house. John Wesley said that Provenian grace is the grace on the porch. You go up to the house and you stand on the porch, and God is there pulling you to come in. It prepares our hearts and minds to hear and receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, and then to respond in faith. And as we respond, we go to the door, and justifying grace is like the door. At the moment of justification, we cross the threshold from unbelief to belief. From unbelief to salvation in Christ. And this, however, is not of our doing. Yes, we do walk through the door, but that door is open because of God's grace. And lastly, sanctifying grace is our home. We move into the house and we grow there. God's grace is there, welcoming us and moving us closer each day, closer to God. And in this house, we mature as disciples of Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. We are saved by grace. Salvation is not something we earn, no matter what our efforts, but there is something wrong in the life of faith that does not show good works. Doing good works will not bring us to salvation. God's grace brings us to salvation. But if there are no good works shown, what is our faith then? So grace in all ways brings change. We are changed as we recognize and receive and grow in God's grace. <laughs> By grace, you have been saved. So let your life show it. Amen. So I invite you to rise and join in our hymn, Freely, Freely, number 389.
that is our benediction, to go and live out God's grace that has been given us. We have received it freely, and let us give freely so that our good works show that we have been saved through Jesus Christ. Go in the peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit to love and serve our God. Amen.